G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, today I thought I'd do things a little bit different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the news stories first and I'm going to work my way back to the charts. Alright, so number one, Coinbase's CEO, Armstrong, his net worth is worth between 7 and $15 billion. Good Lord. <laughs> that is a lot of money. And obviously there's a lot of hype behind the Coinbase IPO that's coming out very, very soon. And I wouldn't be surprised if that net worth could go even higher again. Now, that is a ton of money and it goes to show there's big money to be made in crypto, but really it's the people who kind of build something that are going to make the most. It's not that you can't make money as an investor. You absolutely can. But really, the people who kind of build something and run something, they're the guys and girls that will make the most amount of money. So congratulations to him. Uh, that is quite an achievement to be worth billions of dollars. You know, once upon a time it was, you know, to be worth millions. Now it's billions. And look, some people are even uh, in that trillion dollar mark, I'm pretty sure. So I'm sure he is quite happy with himself at the moment. Now, the Coinbase IPO is something that I am interested in. I'm generally not really into stocks, but I am interested in crypto stocks. So things like Coinbase, uh, you know, again, if Ripple can get this lawsuit sorted out, uh, whatever IPO that they may do, uh, that is something I would possibly look into. Crypto mining firms, that's something I want to look into. I'm not completely against stocks, I'm just against uh, a majority of them, but I do think there are some good ones out there. And here's one of the reasons why I am thinking about the Coinbase uh, IPO. Coinbase is a rare profitable unicorn and will offer public market investors a chance to buy into the crypto craze without buying Bitcoin. I, I, I think a ton of people are going to do this. I'm just unsure about whether I want to jump in as soon as it hits the market because I think it might be a bit of a pump and then a dump. But Again, I'm unreally sure because maybe it will just simply pump and there will be no dump. Uh, and, and that's what I'm just unsure of at the moment. But I do think this is going to be uh, profitable in the long run. It's just in the short run, maybe, you know, you might have to lose some money if you jump in straight away. But for me, if I don't get in straight away, I may not ever get in. So I, I'm unsure at the moment, but I do think this will be uh, a good buy into the future. Now again, I just need to let everyone know that's not financial advice, that's just a personal opinion. I'm not a financial advisor, but I am looking into this, absolutely. I think this could be a really good stock to hold long term, along with some other cryptocurrency stocks. All right, so on February 25th, on-chain analysis and analysis noticed that two 2010 block rules Block rewards were transferred after sitting dormant for over a decade, so old Bitcoin is starting to move. A lot of old blocks have been spent in 2021, and after the large strings of 2010 block rewards were spent on January 3rd and 10th, another massive string of 20 block rewards from 2010 were moved on the 25th. In addition to these old Bitcoin moves, block rewards from 2011 have started to wake in great numbers as well. Now this will probably scare a lot of people and they'll be thinking, oh, this means a big massive dump is coming. Possible, absolutely possible. But we need to remember the amount of Bitcoin that's kind of being bought at the moment. Yeah, we're seeing a retracement at the moment. That's on the exchange traded stuff, not on the uh, OTC markets. That is kept off. On the OTC markets, that's where uh, Grayscale buys up most of theirs. That's where... Uh, PayPal and all sorts of things are likely buying up a lot of theirs. They're not buying directly off the exchange market. Otherwise, the price would be going absolutely sky high. It's more the smaller traders that are doing the exchange uh, traded stuff. I'm not saying the big guys don't buy anything from there, but they just do a most, most of it over the OTC desks, and that doesn't really show up. And look, on the OTC desks, they get a cheaper price, uh, particularly when they're buying in bulk. So let's say Bitcoin is worth, I don't even know what the price is exactly right now. I'm going to say 47000 They're probably buying at $45,000. Now that might not be exactly right. I don't know that 100% for a fact, the price they're getting at. But generally, I know in the OTC desks, you do get a cheaper price. Exactly how much depends on how much you're going to buy. So again, we're just 
you know, making up some sort of figures at the moment. But if it's 47,000 and they're buying it for 45,000 and they buy, let's say, 100 of them, they could go sell a few because they're making $2,000 straight up and put it straight onto the exchange market and just sell a few to make some of their money back. And it wouldn't surprise me if that's what some of what is going on right now and pushing the price down. But that's what I mean. Don't worry too much. There is a lot of people wanting to buy Bitcoin and that's why this old Bitcoin is moving. I can guarantee you this Bitcoin that they have since back in 2010, it's not all their Bitcoin. They're not going, all right, 40 something thousand or 50,000 is the top. I'm just selling all of it. They've probably got hundreds, if not thousands of Bitcoin, considering they were mining back then, and they're just selling off portions of it. They need to stay liquid. They think this is a good price to start selling some. They will never sell all of them. And again, yeah, for me, I'm personally not too worried about this, but it is interesting that, you know, Bitcoin from back then is starting to move. All right, institutional investors pile into crypto exchange traded products that's what i'm talking about stocks and things like that uh i do believe in some stocks and i do believe that some of them are going to be a good buy so we go down here total assets under management across all crypto exchange traded products so etps worldwide have risen 50 percent this month to nearly 44 billion among listed products, Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust tops the list with the most assets under management, while Bitwise's fund was the best performing Bitcoin product by market price over the last 30 days. So this correction, you know, retracement, whatever you want to call it that's happening, it's just going to be a blip in the screen. Things are still super positive, in my opinion. All right. CoinShares launches a $75 million physically backed Ethereum uh, ETP. So a month after launching a Bitcoin ETP on Switzerland's six exchange, CoinShares has released a physically backed exchange traded product following the performance of the second largest cryptocurrency Ethereum. So again, these things aren't going to happen in a bear market. No one's going to want to touch this stuff in a bear market. And generally, this is smart money that's buying into this at the moment because they still believe it's early. Could they be wrong? Yep, possible. Even the big guys get things wrong. They don't get it right all the time. But I just, none of this feels like bearish sentiment to me. I think, you know, you will hear less and less about this kind of stuff, you know, as Bitcoin reaches up around the 100 you know, 150, maybe even 200, $300,000 mark. I'm not sure it gets to there in this cycle. I think 100,000 should be done. Uh, you know, my minimum kind of target for this is around about the 75 to $85,000 mark. I think that would be the lowest peak we could see in this bull run. But again, that's just my personal opinion and it's based on nothing but time in the market and sentiment and things like that. Uh, you know, again, I, I'm not a fortune teller. I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen. That's just my personal opinion. But this to me all still feels really, really bullish. It doesn't feel bearish at all. I'm not too worried by these retracements at the moment. All right, so here we can see Bitcoin whales sold at least 140,000 BTC in February as price suffers. So, you know, the word suffers is probably, you know, this is what media do to kind of sell a story. The price, I wouldn't say, is suffering. It's just had a general correction, a retracement. You know, when things get that bullish, we've spoke about this before, of course there's going to be a pullback. But maybe that kind of $42,000 wick that we saw was the bottom. I do believe we're going to have a candle close down around the $43,000 mark. But we could be wrong. It's Sunday here in Australia, so we're still yet to see Sunday over in the States. And then we're really waiting to see kind of Monday morning in the States when the CME and all that open back up. And we'll see exactly what happens. Is the market, you know, pumped and exuberant? And they're like, yep, uh, that was the low. We're pushing it up. Or are they like, yeah, we want to sell off some more? Time will tell. F2 pool selling. You know, there's a number of people selling. You know, and again, someone who bought Bitcoin for, I don't know, let's say $4,000 and it's now 50, you know, and it was 50 something thousand dollars. They've 10x their money. Of course, they're going to sell some. I sold some. Now, I wasn't lucky enough to buy Bitcoin uh, at three thousand, four thousand dollars. I think the cheapest I got some was maybe five and a half thousand dollars, and I really only bought a tiny amount. And then I, w I was, you know, one of the people who thought, oh, maybe it goes a little bit lower, and I ended up buying most of it around kind of the six around about $8,400 level. 
And again, like most people, I only wish I had a, you know put more money in at the time because I just wasn't sure. Uh, and again, I never claimed to be an expert, but it turns out to be a bit of good, a pretty good price. So again, I bought you know some of it around that kind of really, let's say around about seven thousand, sort of two hundred to around about eight thousand four hundred was the price range that I bought uh, most of you know the Bitcoin that I did purchase. So once it got up to around that forty seven thousand dollar mark, I was like, yeah, you know what, I'm going to sell ten percent just to recoup some of that money. And I've already gone through uh, what I sold. All right. Is Bitcoin at risk of another drop below 40K in a historically corrective march? So that's what we need to remember. That look, it could go lower and it may even drop below 40,000, but it's not the end of the world. If you've done your research uh, and you believe that Bitcoin is going to play out similar to how it has previously, then it's likely, yes, we could pull back a little bit more in March, but maybe it's come early. Again, people... You know, and bigger players, they understand that other people watch these charts and that they're probably thinking, oh, March is normally corrective, so I sell in March. And they sold in February to catch everyone out. So maybe it's happened early, or maybe it was just the start of something longer. Time will tell. We will find out. All right. So rejection at 52,000 indicates further weakness. So if we can't get above 52,000, then maybe we're going to go lower. Currently, we are under that. Now, that may have changed when we go over to the charts, but before, I think it was around $47,000. All right, so the bullish structure is still intact, though. We have to really come down a long way before we really start to get bearish. So that's the price there. Let's see if we can expand this out. Uh, here we go. All right, so yeah, that looks like it's sitting around about at sort of $42,000. So I don't think anyone's going to be too bearish if it comes down to, again, around the $42,000 mark. That's basically where it's going to use old resistance as support. So again, I would say that that's going to be around about there, $42,000. And we kind of have wicked down there already. So I don't think, there we go. All right, so March is often a corrective month. And that's shown by oh, this chart over here, uh, that March has been corrective, but we've had the correction in February. So again, maybe that is just people slightly changing it a little bit because they knew everyone else uh, who had you know, done their chart analysis was probably thinking the same thing. So March is normally corrective. So are we going to correct more in March or have we seen it? Now, look, it's the 28th of Feb now. So March you know, is about a day away, depending on where you are, obviously. 28 days in Feb, rightio, we're waiting for March, we're waiting to see what happens, and that really will sort of come on the Monday morning uh, over in the States. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, it'll be very, very interesting. I, I don't think March is going to sell off uh, all the way through March, I think it's come early. I do think we can still sell lower, don't get me wrong, into the start of March, but I just think it'll be more, uh, March will be a green candle uh, in general, I think it's going to close higher than where it starts. That's me though. All right, so let's go over here. Let's have a look at the charts. Now we need to give this a bit of a refresh. So $1.478 trillion. All right. 1.473, all right. So it seems like we're coming down just a little bit. Um, but again, that's to be expected. It is the weekend. The weekend's not over yet. So it's Sunday here in Australia. It's going to be Saturday over in the States. We could still see a bit of a sell-off tomorrow and leading into early Monday morning. And again, maybe even to next week, it goes down lower. But Bitcoin dominance dropped a little bit. I think that means Ethereum dominance has come up a fraction. Gas prices are coming way, way down. And I think a lot of that uh, is to do with this. People are just jumping into Cardano at the moment. There's less people using Ethereum. The gas prices are just too high, and so people are looking for alternatives. Again, getting into things like Binance Coin, Cardano, Polkadot, and things like that. I think that is why the geese, geese, <laughs> the gas prices are coming down. But I do believe ETH 2.0 uh, is going to come quicker than people think. And once that does happen, I think Ethereum gets on a big, massive run. I think Ethereum price will likely still come down a little bit for the next few days. I know there is a, 
uh, an upgrade coming to Ethereum uh, very, very shortly, and it will help with the gas prices. I don't think it'll completely fix them, but then also the layer two solutions that you know will start to roll out. And they already are starting to roll out, but once they really start to gain traction, I think Ethereum, you know, when gas prices come down to almost nothing, that will be when Ethereum just asserts its dominance. I don't think Cardano or Binance Chain or Polkadot or anyone uh, can catch them. I think they're doing quite well, uh, and they might be at, they might go close. Particularly, sort of Cardano might have half a chance. But look, it's market cap. It's still a really long way off Ethereum. It'd take a lot for it to get up there. Don't get me wrong. I think Ada has a lot of upside from here and can definitely close in on that gap. But once ETH 2.0 gas solutions come out, I think Ethereum just starts to fly, and then it, it will it'll you know, recover most of the ground that it sort of lost. Well, not most of it, but at least enough of it. And it will just have that, you know, it, it's got the adoption, the first world mover. Most people are building on it, or at least they were. That may have changed recently. But I think once the gas, pre's, gas fees get sorted, uh, that's it. It just goes on a massive run. And, you know, it'll start to get to those prices that people have talked about, you know, 5,000, 10,000. I don't know about the 20,000 and the 40,000 that some people have spoke about. In the future, like way, way in the future, yep, absolutely, I could see that happening. In this bull run, I'm sort of thinking more, I don't know, between five to maybe 15,000, somewhere there. I don't know exactly what price. I think five would be the low side for the peak of this bull run, and the high side would probably be around kind of the $15,000, $14,000 mark. But that's still pretty good from something that's only worth $1,500 right now. All right, we can see some green though in the 24 hours, which is good. So there's been a bit of a, you know, I don't know, some exuberance back in the market, but might this drop in the next 24 hours before Monday comes around? Possibly, let's have a look. What's really pumped in the last 24 hours? So reserve rights, that's probably on the news that Grayscale is buying them up or looking at buying into it. Excuse me, Stella had a pretty good pump, Elrond, Starting to make some of those gains back. Algorand doing well. Sushi, A o -A -K uh, OKB, uh, Sushi X. So I don't even know what Sushi X is, but there's the real Sushi. Uh, Ren, Nice, Polkadot, Cardano. I mean, Polygon, it really is just doing extremely well. Uh, it'll be interesting if that can actually get to a dollar. You know, there's lots of people been talking about that. And look at May, that's really only a 5x from here. That's not uh, impossible, but that will be one hell of a ride for Polygon. And, you know, some people have even spoke about, you know, it getting to $2. I mean, if that got to $2, that would be unbelievable. Uh, I can't even remember what price I bought it at, but I bought it, I think it may be $0.02, cents, just under $0.02. Cents. So it means I've 2x my money from there. And if it were to go to, you know, $2, whew, well done. Cosmos doing well again, possibly on news that Grayscale are looking at starting up uh, a trust uh, into Atom. All right, so we've had a look at that. What about losses? Has there been any further losses in the last 24 hours? Because it looks like a lot of things have bounced back. All right, yep, ZK swaps, uh, Voyager token. Uh, Voyager tokens had a really great run, so of course that's going to pull back. Uh, same with Phantom. I don't know too much about Phantom, but it went up quite high. And so, you know, you can expect it to probably lose a little bit more over time. Pundi X, again, had a really good uh, run as well. Uh, there we go, Holo. So, yeah, look, but these dips aren't too bad. You know, they're fairly low. There's only really one double-digit loss, and the rest are just kind of single-digit losses. So nothing too bad. All right, I had someone asked me to have a look into uh, P Network Token again. So I thought I'd do a bit of a follow up with it. All right, here's P Network Token. So it has risen pretty well, particularly since I think it was about January, it got on a bit of a run. I had P Network Token early, it just was underperforming, I lost uh, some money on it, not too much, like literally only maybe 10%, but I, this is one of the coins I sold at a loss. Then I saw it had kind of done a bottoming formation pattern and I bought back into it and yeah, uh, I basically doubled my money straight away. I didn't sell all of it though, I sold some of it, but it seems to have you know formed a bit of a bottoming sort of formation. So we can see here, 
not that long ago it was worth 42 cents it got right up to sort of uh, two dollars forty uh, and now it looks like it might have found you know this seems like a bit of a base here this if you just rule straight across feels like hello it's turned old resistance into support now it could base for quite a long time that doesn't mean it's going to pump uh, drastically or anything like that uh, and it could still dump, but I, it, this just looks like a, a resistance support kind of flip for me. So again, that marries up with that, marries up with that, which basically marries up with this at the moment. So this could be basing and just getting ready for another really big run. We will have to wait and see, because I mean, look at this kind of base that it did all the way back over here. So $1.31, that might be a good price to get in. Now, last but not least, uh, for P Network anyway, we go over here and we can have a look. Look, they've had a few tweets come out. So they're on Telegram. Get in there on Telegram. I know they did something with EOS a while ago. They got a EOS pooling fund. Uh, P Network Dow proposal uh, number five is now open. So look, they're still out there and doing stuff. I just haven't heard too much, you know. Yeah, here we go. So P Network has connected two of the biggest DAP blockchains EOS and Ethereum the DeFi space is exploding but are you part of it so uh, you know EOS Dan Larimer left and there was a lot of talk about you know what was going to happen to EOS and was it dead uh, it still seems to be doing all right and it's hanging in there so even though Dan Larimer has left and moved on you know maybe it's not dead maybe they can actually get back to you know all the hype but you know we'll have to wait and see now here we go. Start minting your uh, minting yours today. Unlock the full interoperability power of DeFi. And look, these are only a few hours old. So P Network is still definitely out there, and they're still working. I just haven't heard of anything major at the moment. Uh, price wise, though, again, when you go back here, this could be uh, not a bad place to get in. And again, never financial advice. I'm not a a financial advisor and I'm not really a trader either either at the moment but I did sell some of my P network not quite at the top I was I think down more around yeah the two dollar mark so you know you can never time it exactly but I am going to keep an eye on this and I may look uh, to buy some more P network with some of the profits that I took from there because I still like the project and it's a low kappa I mean what's the number um, I think it's like in the 100 200 or something like that there we go, 300. It was like 400 and something originally. So it is moving its way up the ranks, just nothing too crazy at the moment. And so if you like P Network, uh, the price at the moment might be uh, a good entry point or a rebuy point depending on you know whether you have any or not. But again, never financial advice. That's just my personal opinion. All right, last but not least, we're going to finish up with the Bitcoin chart. Let's have a look. All right, so again, we're still in a downtrend. This was green when I looked at it earlier, so now it's red. So yeah, possible that we continue to sell off more. Now it's getting close to midnight, so on the Saturday night uh, UTC time. So Sunday could see more of a sell off. Look, I'm not gonna be surprised if Bitcoin doesn't get down to here and touch the 50 day moving average. Not saying it will, I'm just saying I won't be surprised. This is really what I'm looking for, old resistance become support and have a look at that the 50 day moving average almost perfectly lines up with this so this is what i'll be looking for i'm not sure if it will make it down there but again i'm really thinking kind of around about the forty three thousand dollar mark is where i think we're going to find the bottom i think we don't just wick down there i think we probably have a candle that closes down around about there and maybe a wick comes down as we can see here and touches the 50 day moving average there's still a lot of people uh, institutions and things that are keen on bitcoin this is just simply people taking profits because it got so over exuberant way off the 50 day moving average and that's exactly what happened here as well so if we move this chart a bit look it got so far off the 50 day moving average people were just like you know what i'm going to take some profits bang took some profits dead cat bounce sort of fake out bang fell out got oh so close to the 50 day traveled sideways and we had that last sort of final capitulation sort of thing and it did wick down and touch the 50 day moving average and then almost touched there so two days in a row and then that's when it started to make this next move 
And that's all it is. Over exuberance, people are like, yep, I'm happy to take some profits here. And I think you will see some significant buying pressure down around this $43,000 mark and particularly down around about here, this $41,000 mark. Old resistance becomes support, marries up with the 50-day moving average. That's my thoughts. That's my opinion. I don't really have anything else to say. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment, but if you were, congratulations to you, and I'll see you next time.